Have you ever wondered which wire do I need to run which appliance? Well, follow along today and I'm gonna kind of walk you through the basics of the different sizes of wiring that you're gonna see inside of your RV. Welcome to another Two Minute Tech Tip Tuesday. Brought to you by the National RV Training Academy. The largest hands-on RV training academy in America. Hey, before we get to the video, which I know this is the reason why you're here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything. Hit the subscribe button now. Thank you. Now, back to our Tech Tip Tuesday. There's wires of different kinds, different sizes, different everything almost, right? Uh, different manufacturers out there. You can buy wires cheap, you can buy wire that's expensive, but how do I know which one's right for me? Well, the big thing is whenever we're sizing our wire in our RV, now let's say you have an, an accident where a piece of wire gets burnt or something like that. Best case, always whatever size wire that is, and that you'll be able to see the identification on the actual sheeting um, of that wire on the outside of it. It's always best to replace like for like. So let's say you're running a 12 gauge wire that's inside the RV and that's what gets damaged always best to replace with that same size 12 gauge wire. But let's say you're adding in something new. Biggest thing is to always make sure that we have the proper amperage that this wire can handle. Because if we go too small, we might burn up that wire. And if we go too big, well, it's not gonna damage our wire, but we might be spending more money than we need to. It's never bad to go bigger, but it also can be very dangerous if you go smaller. That's where unfore unforeseen things can happen, fires, wires getting burned up, or even melting. I mean, let me, let me be honest, I've seen some pretty bad things out there in the RV world. But today, this is what the goal is, to be able to understand what kind of wire you truly need in your RV. So right here, I've got kind of a diagram here. Like I said, I teach the solar and I teach air conditioning here at the National RV Training Academy. So here's, this is kind of pertaining to our solar class. You can see I've got very small wire all the way up to what we have is what's called 6.4 wire. This is gonna be um, noticeable in your 50 amp RVs. Cause you can see we have our red, our black, our green and our white. So we have our two hot legs, our neutral and our ground. Biggest thing is we always wanna make sure how much amperage can be carried through this wire at once. Because 50 amps we can handle, you know, we need a six gauge wire to be able to handle that 50 amps to be able to run through it. I don't ever wanna put this little wire, which we call as PV, only comes really in two sizes, 10 and 12 gauge. So right around that 20 to 30 amp mark, depending on which size you get. We always wanna make sure that our wire can handle that amperage that runs through it. Because if not, like I said earlier, this is where we can get into some big trouble. So best case scenario, whatever wire company you go with, always make sure you ask for their spec sheet. And what I mean by that is how much can their wire handle per size and amperage? I know the favorite company that I like to use is a company called Windy Nation. I know their sizes of wire and I know what their amperages are for those wires. So I know which ones to install. Like I know when I'm doing installing new batteries, lithium, especially in a solar system or inverters, I'm gonna, gonna go with this bigger wire, which is a two watt or a four watt cable. I know the two watt cable from Windy Nation can handle up to about 325 amps. That's a lot of amps. Or right here that you see in this picture, it's a four out cable from Windy Nation. I know this one can handle up to 440 amps at one time through this wire. It's always good to just consult, your, consult the manufacturer of that wire to know exactly what those amperages can be pushed through it. Because a lot of times these are volts rated or very high. We can handle 600, 1000, even 1000 plus bolts through these wires, but the amperage is the thing that I feel like we most commonly forget about. To where that amps, whatever we're pushing through that at one time, could really do some damage to these smaller gauge wires that we have in our RV. If you're enjoying what you're learning so far in this tech tip, and you want to learn more, why don't you hop on over to the National RV Training Academy, contact your local student advisor, where you can start a business, make money while traveling, and be able to help out your fellow campers. Visit nrvta.com. These two bottom wires right here, my six gauge four conductor and my six gauge three conductor wire these are going to be predominantly used on the ac side of things now let's talk dc side dc side we all know and if you don't know distance is resistance so the longer the wire the run the greater resistance it has on the dc side so 
Great example. I know if you all have 12 watt refrigerators in your RVs, one of the early concerns was, is the size of cable they were actually installing to these 12 watt refrigerators. Because let's face it, sometimes in a travel trailer, your battery's all the way on the very front of your RV, and then you have a refrigerator all the way at the very back. So traveling that, you know, sometimes 20, 30, shoot, even 40 feet, because the way these fifth wheels are made and class A's are built today, we've got that super long run. What happened was, is that voltage in that was it dropped. So it wasn't be able to carry the load that we need to be able to properly run those 12 volt refrigerators. So one of the big fixes was, is we're actually gonna jump up to a thicker gauge wire, jumping up to that six gauge wire to where it can handle higher volts, higher amps, to be able to safely be able to run those refrigerators. So we weren't having all those problems with the compressor circuit boards getting burned up. So it's always, 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 when you're talking on the DC side of things, remember, the longer the run, the greater that resistance could be in that wire. So it's best to always go short as possible on these DC side of things. The 120 side, where you're talking the AC side, where you're running your air conditioners, your residential refrigerators in your RV, water heaters on electric, all that stuff, that's, it's not as important on the AC side, but it definitely when we're talking on the DC side, distance is resistant. So always be careful whenever you're making the DC side of things, try to make your runs, especially in a solar build or anything where it revolves a heavier load on the DC side, make those runs as short as possible. Good rule of thumb, I always teach my students in class, try to stay around six feet or less on the DC side of things just to make sure everything's safe. And there's your tech tip. All right, before you get to the bloopers, which is why you're here in the first place, the RV industry needs thousands of RV technicians and inspectors, and now is the perfect time to do that. If you want to make more money or have more control over your time, go ahead and click the link below. Or if you just want to learn how to fix your own RV, got something for you there. Head over to rvtechcourse.com and get started today. Now for the reason that you're at the end of the video, roll the bloopers. Let's point at this one. Four gauge. Now you're pointing at the four gauge. Oh. Because you were also pointing out to the... <laughs>